invite you to find a place to sit, and I, I might even invite you to find uh, some, some new folks to sit with, to still find some new faces and some new friends to make as we begin to round out this weekend. So come on in, have a seat, get some water. Well, get some water, then have a seat. The other way doesn't work. Is this yours? No. Oh, cute. And I'm going to invite you to join me in prayer one more time as we have our final plenary together. Would you join me in prayer? Holy One, we thank you for how creative you are. You are diligent and you are persistent in your love. We look forward to celebrating the way that your spirit will call, call out in this midst that we will honor that and live into that as we elect new officers, as we commission the youth to the national youth event. In these moments, we are recognizing your spirit at work, not only in the lives of those who are being commissioned or being elected to new positions, but in each one of us, calling us deeper, calling us more into you, Thank you for the ways that you have worked in our lives up until this moment. For the ways you continue to work. It's in your precious and powerful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm excited that we finished so much business at our last plenary that we get to jump ahead and begin with what I think is something extremely exciting. You've had a chance, uh, hopefully throughout the last day or so, to get to meet uh, Pastor Darrell Goodwin and some of the delegation from Liberation Ministries. If not, perhaps you've had a chance to read a little bit about them in this on this paper in your packet. Or maybe you've seen the email sent out by Reverend Dan Stern from Chair of the Church Development Committee. And if you haven't had a chance to make any of those connections yet, it's all right, there's still time. Because I'd like to invite uh, Pastor Darrell and the delegation from Liberation Ministries if they are in the room, I think they joined us in the room. There they are. <laughs> I, I would love to invite you to, to come forward and to share us, share with us a little bit about um, how your church has gone through this process, maybe a little bit about the relationship with the Church Development Committee, just to bring us a word uh, from Liberation Ministries. Thank you so much. Fortunate the delegation from Liberation said, do we have to go up there? <laughs> so I will, as the pastor, take the, the burden of, of course, talking about our ministry. Um, you know, people have been asking me some great questions, so if I can give you a quick two-minute version, or is it two minutes that you get in this session? Um, Liberation started five years ago, um, and we started at Garfield Community Center couple of UCC folks who were sitting in the audience who came to remind me we were at your first service um, in March 11th in 2007 and Liberation uh, started out of me applying to be on the board for Seattle Black Pride and during my interview uh, the board president looked at my resume and said how are you an ordained Pentecostal pastor and you want to work with Seattle Black Pride this doesn't really mix um, and in the midst of that conversation, she said, you know, there are people in our community who want an affirming, charismatic church. Will you pastor? And I wish I could tell you the power of God came and I said, yes. But I said, no, I will help. <laughs> I will help whoever it is that's supposed to do this. Um, but as God would be God, I ended up going to City of Refuge United Church of Christ in San Francisco. Um, and I saw this amazing opportunity of what it would look like to have a truly radically inclusive charismatic church and came back to Seattle and said, this is the Pacific Northwest, but I think we might be able to do this. 
um, and five years later, we're still doing it. Liberation has about 30 members. We have 299 Facebook likes um, and a number of other people that come at, in varying places. I think we've had people to visit us from Paris, Texas, to most recently this gentleman from Paris, France, who came to say, I heard that a church like this might exist. In order for me to come out to my family, I need to know that there is a place like this. And so he's emailed me recently to say, I've been able to tell my family who I am and tell them that there is a church, even if it's not on um, our soil yet. So that's kind of where we are. We are a charismatic, multicultural, radically inclusive church. And that means over these five years, we've had you know Muslims join our church, people who identify as Sikh. Um, and most, my favorite person is a person who identifies as an atheist but loves to come and hear gospel music every Sunday. <laughs> Um, which I think is very indicative of um, the charism that I think the United Church of Christ really sponsors for us. So that's kind of in a nutshell who we are and who we hope to be in covenant with you all is we hope to bring the gifts of who we are as a congregation into this conference while at the same time being really blessed by the richness that is the Pacific Northwest Conference of the United Church of Christ. So um, we hope that you, in true discernment and care, think about whether or not you should raise that pink card um, I hope the Spirit of God is truly leading you, but just in case you're still questioning on that, um, I figured in my two minutes I could show you a 30 second clip of our choir, and our choir will sing to you how to vote. Amen? <laughs> so, if you could play. Okay, I think that's it. <laughs> say this, uh, to, to joyfully celebrate in the inclusion of Liberation Ministries as part of the Pacific Northwest Conference of the United Church of Christ, let's not only raise our cards, let us stand, rise, and body in your spirit as you're able, and say amen. amen. So if we know when we see you walking around, if we wanted to ask some questions, get to know you a little bit better. Point of order, John Eisenhower, Eagle yes. Harbor Congregational Church, although we did celebrate ending the debate, yes. for lack of any confusion, could we actually say the words that we are welcoming them in? We haven't had that vote yet. Oh, did I not? Did I not say yeah. that? I thought I said we could stay in the we did, but I'm all fine with saying yes again. Well, let's see, if we could say yes twice, I think we had tutorials on how to do this. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's okay to say the word lots of times. Maybe I should hold the gavel this time to feel more official. Okay. Um, all in favor of adopting and bringing in Liberation Ministries as a part of the United Church of Christ, raise your pink cards. Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> Gavel now, make it official. Excellent. Gavel on, Gavel boy. Yeah. Well, Bobby, I see you, you've got your hat ready. Are you ready to come up and 
share with us for the nomination slip. <laughs> Yay, Bobby! All right, get out your pins. Look at that shadow. For those of you who were here yesterday, you heard my testimony that I believe that the Holy Spirit was moving among us. Uh. The Holy Spirit moved among us. I would like you to add the following names. I will not repeat any of the names that I mispronounced yesterday. <laughs> But I shall add a few other ones. I already ask for your grace and forgiveness if I do so. I will try not to. On your first page, under Board of Directors, next to Scribe, will you please add Ms. Carol Colt, Richmond Beach Congregational UCC Shoreline. Go ahead. Under Church Development Committee, will you please add Mr. Nick Casterlang, Westminster Congregational UCC, Spokane. You may now flip your pages to page number five. I call your attention to Ministry Resources Committee, and I am thrilled to invite you to add the name the Reverend Darrell Goodwin from Liberation, Seattle. I would also invite you to add Ms. Maureen McLean, Magnolia UCC. Seattle. There are still two available positions, and if you have the permission of anyone, you may nominate them immediately, if not before. Uh, for the illiterate on the typing over here, could I get the spelling corrected on any of any names? Spelling corrected on the names you just read. If it's native, Darrell, it's D A R R E L L Goodwin, G O O D W I N. Correct, Darrell? Am I saying it correctly? Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, please. Maureen, yes? I have a nomination. <laughs> And you must have permission. <laughs> Tell me who you are. I'm Margaret Dirbar, Youth and Young Adult Task Force, and I'd like to nominate Jay Briggs for to position. Youth and Young Adult Task Force. Oh, have we? If that's okay. Youth and Young Adult Task Force. It's on page three. On page. Page four in mine, it might be page three in yours. And I wasn't quite done with my report, but I will J -A -Y accept this. B -R -I -G -G -F. And tell me again who you're adding. Jay Briggs from Montmore, UCC. B-R-I-G-G-S? Yes. Yes? Yes. Where is Jay? Do you accept this? Yes. All right, will you see me afterwards with more information, please? Sure. Okay, stick with me, please. I now would invite you to turn to stewardship. It's page six on my document, thereabouts. Will you please add Ms. Tracy Bowens, Liberation, Seattle. Tracy spells her name T-R-A-C-Y. Her last name B-O-W-E-N-S. And I'm sorry that was under stewardship. <laughs> 
What was that under? That is under stewardship. It's a long ways from my notes to your computer. <laughs> Okay, please find 2013 Annual Meeting Committee. Are you ready? We're ready. Please add the Reverend Amy Rune, University Congregational, UCC, Seattle. Please add Ms. Dana Sprinkle, Shalom UCC, Richland. Sprinkle, sprinkle those nuts on my Sunday. Are you ready? I'm still sprinkling. Miss Celestine Barry Smith. Liberation Seattle. <laughs> Celestine spells her first name C E L E S T I N E. Her last name, capital B E R R Y, no space, capital S M I T H. Are you ready? Miss Adrian Alford, Liberation Seattle. Yes. Adrian spells her name, capital A D R I E N N E. Last name, capital A L F O R D. F. F as in Frank. I am being very frank with you. Final one. The Reverend Cynthia Riggins. North Shore UCC Woodenville. Equal Opportunity Celebration. Cynthia, would you like me to drop the S at the end? I would appreciate that. All right. I never added it. Please remove the S at the end of Riggin. I'd have to add it and remove it. Do I have to? <laughs> Dear ones, the Holy Spirit has moved among us. These people have moved forward to accept the work of our conference. We do not want anyone left behind. So if you have an interest in serving on a committee, if you will let us know, the Ministry Resources Committee will be happy to help you find your place of service next year. This ends my report. Slate we've heard. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve. Move, move. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any more discussion? It's been moved and seconded to uh, approve this nomination slate. Thank you so much to the work of, of MRC for putting that together and for all of you who saying yes to the movement of spirit and the call of spirit. All those in favor of approving this nomination slate, raise your pink card. Woohoo! All those opposed? And all those abstaining, it passes. Where is next year's meeting and what are the dates? Where is next year's annual meeting and what are the dates? Wenatchee. Wenatchee, and it's the last. 
Thanks, Arlene. Thanks, Arlene. Could you say that one more time? 20 seconds. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Mike, I invite you forward for the installation of these newly elected officers. Did you hear the date? No. 26th to 28th of April. It's on the evaluation sheet on the bottom. And the evaluation sheet is green, right? Would those officers who are uh, were just elected, would you please come forward if you can? And just line up right over here. And with those who are going to be the youth delegates to the national youth event, come over here and line up right here, youth and adults. So officers this way. Come, masters, people, come. Representatives of some of those who are going to be attending national youth <laughs> events. <laughs> yeah, there's 50 of us going. <laughs> so, sisters and brothers, hear these words. Affirmation of ministry is the act whereby, in this case, a conference recognizes the diverse gifts of its members and celebrates the particular ministry of each person in the life of the church or in various settings in the life of the world. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit gives them. These people have been called by God in accordance with the faith and order of this conference to serve among us. They have accepted their call and are before us in witness to their willingness to serve. There are some who are standing here among us who have agreed to be representatives of this conference and are willing to accept this call as well. Sisters and brothers, it is an honor to be entrusted with responsibility for particular service and for particular representation in the ministry of the church, whether we are gathered or scattered. So first, to you, the asterisk people. <laughs> Careful. Having prayerfully considered the duties and responsibilities of your ministry, are you prepared to serve with the help of God in Christ's name and for the glory of God? If so, say, I am. I am. Do you promise to exercise your ministry diligently and faithfully, showing forth the love of Christ? If so, say, I do, relying on God's grace. I do, relying on God's grace. Sisters and brothers, you are representing this conference as you go forth to the national youth event in just a few days. <laughs> Many days. It's all relative. Yeah, to me that, that to, to me that to me that seems like just a few days. Sunrise, sunset. Do you promise to be good representatives by sharing compassion and kindness with all of those that you meet? If so, say, I do. I do. Do you promise to speak your mind with love and hope? If so, say, I do. I do. Sisters and brothers, members of this household of faith, you have heard the promises of our brothers and sisters in Christ who have affirmed God's call to service and representation of us. Let us affirm our attention to live in covenant with them. Whether in your heart or on your feet, I invite you to rise at this time. Please repeat after me. We gather in celebration. We gather in celebration of the joy that is ours. Of the joy that is ours. To be partners with you. To be partners with you. 
in the service of Jesus Christ. In the service of Jesus Christ. We promise to love you. We promise to love you. Honor your leadership. Honor your leadership. Honor your representation of us. Honor your representation of us. And assist you. And assist you. That together we may be a faithful church. That together we may be a faithful church. Of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. You can stop repeating. Eternal God, you have called these people to serve you in this conference and in the world, which you have entrusted to our care and keeping. Send your Holy Spirit on them that they may serve among us with honor and faithfulness, that they may represent us with kindness, compassion, love, and safety. Help them be diligent in their duties that your church may prosper in the mission you place before it. Help them know that we love them as they move throughout their duties of representation as they move throughout their duties within their particular tasks. May their example prove worthy for all of us to follow as we are united in Christ's ministry to the glory of your name. Let God's people say together, Amen. Amen. And now you may whoop and holler. news online. We have a website. Oh, we got to get more of you. Please sign up out there and give me your email so that you get notification. Have your church make a link to the website. You can get the website format and you can also get it um, so that in PDF format so that you can print some copies at your church so that you keep up on not only stories about what resources the conference has for you, but resources of what your partners and other congregations around the conference are doing. And then also, I've been doing for quite a long time a publication called The Fig Tree. It covers Inland Northwest, that's basically east of the Cascades. However, a lot of you on the west side are receiving it, and it does the same kind of thing. It tells the stories of all the new and old things that people are doing because of their faith. So it's really 
the future, but we've been doing it for 29 years. <laughs> and it grows out of uh, the ecumenical work that I've done um, with the World Council of Churches and also locally, um, and, and is about stories of people who are thinking and reflecting as well as doing. So, and that's at www.thefigtree.org. And you can connect with the conference news anytime at pncuccnews.org or connect through the conference. There's also RSS, there's also Facebook. So there's all sorts of different means that we have to communicate you, to you and with you, whatever your choice is. If you have stories you want to share, you can email them to editor at the fig tree, at, excuse me, too many, <laughs> editor at pncuccnews.org, and we can include them, and come to me and talk with me, and I'll get a picture of you here, and we can talk and get some of your stories in there. suspend the rules for the purpose of presenting a special resolution. If you could tell us a little bit about who you are and where you're from. I'm Greg Grinder from University Congregation. Okay, so you're moving to suspend the rules in order to present a special resolution on support of Catholic religious women. There's a motion on the floor to suspend the rules in order to present a resolution on the support of Catholic religious women. This is something, to suspend the rules, we would need a two-thirds vote, but is there a second for this motion? Okay. Okay. Second. So, all in favor, all in favor of suspending the rules in order to present this emergency resolution, please raise your cards. I'm going to need my tellers, as this is a two-thirds majority vote. No problem, I think so. It's like, I have my teller telling me we already have it. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. All those opposed? Yeah. All those abstaining? Yeah, it looks like we have it. All right. So does that mean that we can just start dancing and everything? Or what is that? So. Should I present it? Yes. Special resolution. Uh, whereas the Vatican has recently questioned the ethics and doctrinal purity of ministries undertaken by American Catholic religious women, and whereas the Catholic Bishop in Seattle has been charged with the investigation of American Catholic religious women, thus causing concern among these dedicated orders, and whereas the ethical standing, not to mention purity, of many non-women within the hierarchy of the Vatican might itself be questionable, <laughs> Therefore, be it resolved that we, the delegates of the Pacific Northwest Conference of the United Church of Christ, in annual meeting assembled this day in the city of Pasco, do hereby welcome and encourage all orders of the American Catholic religious women to affiliate with the United Church of Christ. <laughs> and further, we pledge in covenantal commitment to honor their ministries, to leave questions of their doctrinal purity to God, <laughs> and not to investigate their ethics. <coughs> this is signed by delegates from University Congregational, some of the Congregational Westminster Congregation, North Shore UCC, St. Paul's UCC in Seattle, First Congregational in Walla Walla, Alki UCC in Seattle, and Lummi, Lummi Island, Congregational UCC in Lummi Island. Thank you. Questions, comments, concerns? <laughs> Do I have a call for the question? Is that what I heard? What are you saying? There is a question. Uh, the neutral mic is here. I just want to make you walk a little bit. So I do have a question. As much as I appreciate the spirit, I am Dennis Hollinger, land at Wayside United Church of Christ in Federal Way. As much as I appreciate the spirit and intent, 
if we literally pass this with good faith, uh, and an order would join the United Church of Christ, praise God, they would, I would think, then be considered authorized ministers in the United Church of Christ, and that last line, not to investigate their ethics, would be going against the Committee on Ministries' need to uh, have that availability for any authorized minister. So I just raise a, a question of, is that line in conflict with our policy? Yes. I'm hearing murmurs of yes. Is there someone who, the author of the resolution, can speak to that, or someone who can speak to that question? I'm not an author, but I would offer a friendly am amendment of putting in the word um, arbitrarily or unreasonably. Yeah. Okay, there's a friendly amendment to add arbitrarily or... Do you have a preference for arbitrarily Do you have a preference of those words? I can... My friendly amendment can be amended. <laughs> I'm sorry, John Eisenhower, Eagle Harbor Congregation, you didn't remember. Yeah, I, I'm not remembering much anymore. Um, <laughs> Arbitrarily. That seems to be the friendly amendment you're going to. Yeah, I'm, I'm Doug, Doug Shepard from the Bellingham Church. <clears throat> I'm, I'm strongly in favor of examining my faith and those I travel with and testing my faith as to whether it's a consistent my belief in a God of justice. I'm very much against participating in a group that decides to condemn somebody else's faith in any type of resolution whatsoever, or to examine somebody else's faith, or to criticize somebody else's faith. And although I haven't spent a great deal of time in the Congregational Church, I've chose to come to the Congregational Church because I'm surprised that this would even occur. And as a piece of information, are the nuns asking us to do this, or do we feel the need to take on other people's faith? I, I'm not quite sure what the purpose is if it's not just to criticize the Catholic Church. Uh -oh. Hi, Andy Castro-Lang, Westminster, UCC Spokane. Actually, I don't know what mic I'm at, but I will say this, that um, women religious inside the Roman Catholic Church are not allowed at this point to criticize their hierarchy without punitive measures being taken against them. This is basically um, muzzling the internal dissent within the Catholic Church. And the support of the women, the religious women inside the Catholic Church, while this is tongue in cheek here, I think, firmly tongue in cheek, it is also um, an outside Christian communion seeking to support another group of folks in a different communion who actually cannot speak for themselves at this point without um, action being taken against them. So we know that inside the Catholic Church right now, uh, there are many women who feel they cannot speak on their own behalf. Oh, and by the way, it's the Archbishop of Seattle. Are you coming to the neutral? Yes. Hi. Uh, Donald Schmidt, Admiral Church West, Seattle. Uh, the women that are being challenged by the church, technically, they're not religious women. Their title is women religious. And I know that may sound picky, but I think every Roman Catholic woman would consider herself a religious woman. Um, but the ones in question, we call them nuns. Their official title is women religious. So can we change that? I know it's picky, but... Um, and then can I speak just real, real quick, or do I have to go to the other mic? You need to go to the other mic. Okay. <laughs> so I believe there was a friendly amendment to switch it. Bobby? Bobby Dierta, pastor of the United Church of Ferndale and a graduate of um, Seattle School of Theology and Ministry. Thanks, Seattle University School of Theology and Ministry. Still correcting me. <laughs> In all of the years that I be belong to this conference, I have never stood at this mic. 
When I was in seminary, I traveled besides sisters and brothers of the Catholic tradition. I have a very close friend who is not a religious sister. She is a lay person serving in the Catholic Church. I came with a very naive attitude and understanding of that tradition and I remember inviting her to come over to the United Church of Christ because she was a called person. Many of the friends that I made at Seattle University explained to me that if there is going to be reform within their tradition, they need to stay within their tradition. I appreciate the sentiment of solidarity for this resolution. I do not appreciate the tongue-in-cheek feeling that I am experiencing in my soul in this moment. And I would call us all to be a people of prayer in a denomination that prides themselves on being inclusive. And to not invite them to come be with us, but to stand be beside them and walk in solidarity with them. Esther Pfeiffer, Altopia, UCC. Um, I, I agree with what Bobby said, and, and, and I believe we need to stand in solidarity. And I also have a technical question regarding the fact that I am Presbyterian, and we do have creeds, and we talk about the Catholic Church being a universal church. And I'm wondering if we need to clarify this and say Roman Catholic Church in each of those statements so we're clear that we're not talking about the church universal. Are you proposing a friendly amendment then? Yes, if, if that's acceptable. Great. Okay. I'd like to. Go ahead, I didn't see you. John Eisenhower, Eagle Harbor Congregational, Bainbridge Island. I'd like to propose an amendment. I don't know if it will be friendly. And <laughs> the. The whereas that I feel is sticks the tongue furthest in the cheek is the third whereas, and I would uh, suggest, I would amend, offer an amendment that we strike the third whereas, which is uh, one of um, judgment, yeah. and I would suggest that we alter the therefore, um, everything starting from do hereby, and instead of welcome and encourage all um, American Roman Catholic women religious to affiliate with the United Church of Christ just do hereby uh, pledge our um, support and prayers solidarity. in solidarity with the Roman Catholic women religious and strike to affiliate with the United Church of Christ and leave the rest of the resolution in order. Okay, yeah, sorry. Is that received as a friendly amendment? Yeah. Let me see if I can alter it the way I just said. All right. And you recorded how that is altered, uh, that alteration? Okay. Mike Denton, uh, conference minister, member of Plymouth Church in Seattle. I would be lying if I were to say that I haven't fantasized about doing the exact same thing. <laughs> I would be lying. Um, the, um, the problem is, is that um, the way that I imagine this will be received um, and the way that this could affect, in some ways, ecumenical relations. Um, the, this would not just begin, um, this would not just be sort of a local effect on something that happened within this meeting. Um, this would be something that would affect realistically ecumenical relationships for our, our entire denomination. Uh, <laughs> This wouldn't, this wouldn't be received as a, um, as a comment, it would be received as, as something like a grenade. Um, so the, uh, it, it would create not any kind of small uh, splash of comment within the way that it was initially written. Um, so 
I, I, I hesitate to um, go with this as an emergency resolution without a lot more conversation and discernment of prayer um, among us. Um, even though I definitely appreciate this sentiment. Am I supposed to be at a certain microphone? I've been too busy over there. Is this okay? Sure. Okay. Um, Who are you? Oh, Jim Castro Lang, pastor of the First Congregational United Church of Christ in Colville. Um, and what I, what I like about this is just the subject matter. Um, and I would like to find a mechanism, not this resolution, where we can have conversations that respect what we are as an ecumenical church that offers appropriate kinds of support to the women religious in the Roman Catholic Church, as we could possibly do in other denominations as well. But I think it takes a lot more work to figure out how we appropriately do that, respecting all the, the traditions involved here. I'm Dee Eisenhower, Eagle Harbor Congregational United Church of Christ. I also serve on your behalf as the co-chair of the Executive Advisory Board for the School of Theology and Ministry at Seattle University. And um, I just think that this would be... Um, well, I appreciate the, the support of the women religious. I just think this would be an awkward thing for me to have to, you know, be representing among the people um, that I'm in covenant with at the School of Theology and Ministry at Seattle University. So I'm just speaking against it and asking you to vote against it. Um, Becky Caldwell, Plymouth Church, Seattle. Maybe speaking on behalf of the ill-mannered. Um, I think it's important to say that the real victims that aren't being named here are actually children. And that the thing that we're kind of cracking a little bit of a joke about is a pretty heinous epidemic of pedophilia that was protected bureaucratically. And I'm sorry if we offend those people, but if we're gonna do this, I think we should actually full on offend them. And we shouldn't kind of do it sideways like we're doing um, you know, standing up for these adult religious women who are probably physically safe at this moment. Um, but it's really not about that. And I wouldn't mind doing something. I mean, our resolutions have criticized people on much lower levels. We have condemned people who let people pick grapes for not very much money. We've done all kinds of things that didn't go to the root of as big a problem as this is. So I think that if we're going to do it, we should do it in the right way, in a big way. Tom Sorensen, Monroe Congregational United Church of Christ Monroe, and a graduate Master of Divinity degree from the Seattle University School of Theology and Ministry. I know one of the women who has been a target uh, of the hierarchy recently and respect her as much as anybody I've ever met. But the School of Theology and Ministry at Seattle University is a wonderful ecumenical resource for our denomination and for many other non-Catholic denominations in the Pacific Northwest. And I'm very concerned that this could complicate that continued relationship from which I and so many of my friends and colleagues have benefited and are benefiting. Um, and I agree with the sentiment that while we certainly support the women religious in their uh, efforts to be faithful, this isn't the way to do it. Judy Edwards, St. Paul's United Church of Christ. This is obviously a difficult one. Um, so I don't know all the answers and I know there's problems, but it makes me think of something I read the other day, and I think it was in the Seattle Times, where someone referred to um, the countries that uh, oppress women and that women are um, beaten and raped and, and whatever, and we say, well, that's their culture, and we don't want to offend the culture. And, you know, saying it's their culture or their religion, if it's something that's oppressive, is it okay by saying, well, that's their religion? 
the other part of that being that the Catholic Church has a hierarchy, not a lot of the individuals within it, but the hierarchy, it, it doesn't mind putting a whole lot of money and in their worship service, their efforts in pushing people to oppose marriage equality. Uh, they, it's not just disagreeing about an issue, but by doing that, and we've said it often enough, they should know that by doing that, they're saying that those of us who believe differently, that have our faiths, that our faith shouldn't matter, that we shouldn't be able to follow our faith, that the law should stop us from being able to uh, perform marriages that are recognized by the state in our churches. So they offended me a whole lot. And, and I, I, I know, you know, should we pick a fight, but, you know, we're so nice. And I wonder sometimes if it's right to be nice. Esther Piper, LTOP, United Church of Christ, and point of clarification about Seattle Pacific University. Is it a Catholic? Yes. You are a Catholic? Okay. okay, well, I did not know that, and I don't know if everybody else did, so. Mary Miller, North Shore United Church of Christ. Um, I appreciate the amendments and the friendly amendments that were made. Um, I never thought I would disagree with Mike Denton about anything, but I'm afraid that women need to speak clearly and, and other people need to speak clearly with or for women. And I would note that as this is written, so I'm sorry if it's going to make Mike's job hard and other people, but that's our job. Um, I would also note that as this reads, it says, do hereby pledge our prayers in support, in solidarity. And I'm having a hard time finding out what's wrong with pledging prayers and support. The solidarity that the, the um, American Roman Catholic women religious may decide amongst themselves, and I'm sure they're praying on it, they're going to want to go along with this order by their church hierarchy, and that they are going to listen and pray and work. And then we would be in solidarity with that decision also. All we're saying is that we pledge our prayers and support for those women. And I think we need to do it. Is there a point of clarification or point of order? Point of order? Um, before I make the motion I'm going to make, I just want to say one thing. And that is that as I'm listening to this conversation, what seemed like, excuse me, I'm Tom Caldwell, Plymouth Church, Seattle. Um, as I listen to this, it's like there's an abyss that's opening up underneath us in this room. Um, there's a lot of confusion. Um, there are people of very, very good will and intention and knowledge showing up on opposite sides of this thing. Um, this seems like a very large issue, much larger than I thought it was when it came to the floor. So I propose, Mr. Moderator, that we postpone, table this motion, if you will, to a date certain. Uh, I'm not sure what that date would be. Uh, it's certainly no later than the next annual meeting, but it might be we refer this to the board. Uh, for further work, I don't know, but I am proposing that we stop this process now. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to table this until a later time, and is there a, no, no later a motion to table? No later than the next annual meeting. Um, is there any discussion around that motion to table it until the table is not going to When you postpone to a certain time, it's debatable. Thank you. So is there any debate on the motion to postpone to a certain time? One of the purposes of our lunchtime gathering that uh, created this bit of mischief, uh, and we knew we were creating a bit of mischief. Who are you? Just tell us about Greg Turner, uh, University Church. 
um, was that it was timely. Uh, it's meant as a admittedly tongue-in-cheek, and I think the tongue-in-cheek has been pretty much removed from it, uh, support for our sisters in ministry of whatever denomination, but in this case, being judged by a hierarchy that has, you know, as our resolution suggested, and whereas, and has now been taken off, is in, has questionable standing by our lights to be an ethical judgment of anybody. And uh, that was, I think, one of our purposes. I support all the friendly resolutions, but I do not support postponing it because I think that loses the purpose of our of our effort here was to provide, uh, provide timely uh, support to uh, Catholic women religious. Thanks. Discussion is about uh, the motion to table it. I uh, support the motion to table it. However, I don't want it to wait a year. Um, I think my suggestion would be to take those who drafted this motion and have them uh, work with the board of directors. And I think there also needs to be some consultation with some Catholic women religious saying, how can we support you? We talked earlier, someone mentioned about going to another culture and not respecting them. Well, we might override the respect of their culture when we see abuse, but we would consult them first. We would find out who they are. So I support tabling it, but then we're going to need to consider a mechanism for how to go forward. Point of clarification, are we discussing a witness or a prudential resolution? I understand this to be a resolution of witness. Thank you. So two-thirds majority. That's correct. Um, also, I, I understand that there are things that people share and say that resonate with us and connect with our heart, but as a way uh, to continue to keep the space as a safe space, um, we ask that you refrain from, from clapping and showing your support after comments and such as that. Thank you. I'm Pat Mayo, University, United Church and University Place. I support tabling this. Um, it was mentioned about the Catholics being involved in the marriage equity thing. And you have to remember that the several Catholic priests have just come out saying that they will not support the church in seeking signatures. So for us to, at this point, condemn the Catholics, so we need the support of those that are actually standing with marriage equality, I think would be in very poor taste. The call for question, question on the motion to table this to a later time with the suggestion that the, the ed drafters continue to work on it in consultation the American Catholic women. Um, all those in favor? Uh, ending debate. Very close. Are we in to end debate? All those in favor of ending debate uh, around tabling the motion, please raise your hand. Raise your tags. Nice and high. All those opposed? All those abstaining? Thank you. Now, uh, voting on to table this motion to no less or no more than a year out, suggesting that those the drafters can do further consultation um, with American Catholic religious women. Is it women religious? Women religious. Thank you. And the board. And the board. Um, all those in favor, please raise your tag. All those opposed. Thank you. And all those abstaining. Motion carries to table this resolution until a further time. We have a motion to reinstate uh, parliamentary rules to go back into our agenda. So moved. Second. We moved and seconded to go back into our agenda. All those in favor? Uh, uh, Raise my one more time. Almost there. All those opposed? And abstaining? Thank you. Yes. Well, I'm Elizabeth Dilley from First Congregational United Church of Christ in Red Oak, Iowa. And if I might just take a moment to reflect to you something that I observed that was wonderful in what just happened. Adults 
behaved like adults. <laughs> you disagreed deeply. You didn't freak out. You didn't go into crisis mode. You didn't start attacking one another. You listened to one another. You considered many alternatives. You came to a decision that maybe a lot of you like and maybe some of you don't like, but it seems like I think all of you are able to live with. And not only do I just want to affirm that because it's sort of my nature to want to affirm people and communities, but I want to lift up for you that this is not something that always happens in conferences when contentious things happen. I witnessed something that I hope becomes more common, and I thank you for showing me what's possible when we disagree deeply. Thank you so very much. With that, I'd like to invite our vice moderator, Christine Hansen. <laughs> This is just an invitation and reminder that tomorrow at worship, at Sunday morning worship, uh, each congregation is invited to bring, if you haven't already brought your OCW and your stewardship um, forms, sorry, okay, your stewardship, that, your stewardship forms, that's the time to bring it tomorrow morning during worship to offer, uh, bring that as a part of our offering, as part of our life together. Thanks. Thank you. Now, thank you. Um, over the last year, I have had, uh, it's been a great pleasure to work with you, Christina. Um, the spirit and the uh, joy and the levity that you bring to our meetings um, and the calm presence that you have, I really am looking forward to seeing that presence brought also from not only to the board of directors, but into our larger gatherings. And I am very, very much looking forward to seeing you leading this group, leading uh, the board of directors and uh, facilitating um, us as a community as we continue to try to live into the calling that we received. So with that, then I look forward to passing you the moderator's cross. Yeah. Okay, I'll do this again. David, who are you? <laughs> uh, oh. um, Chris oh. Hansen, Peshastin Church. <laughs> and thank you for giving me this opportunity. And I just, I need you to know that um, I really feel a wonderful warmth in this room. And I feel a huge amount of support. And I think together, we're going to have a wonderful year. As we've had a great year past with Brandon and Ellen. Oh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Okay. Oh, okay, and then, uh, just a minute. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, the, the motion is to adjourn at the end of worship tomorrow. I'm sorry, I wasn't aware of that. There's going to be a few of those times, you know? <laughs> but together we'll do it, okay? And, and so I think we're moving next door, is that correct, at this point? Yeah, for dinner. And um, uh, so this is a motion that's uh, to adjourn at the end of worship tomorrow. What time's dinner? Oh, I'm, i got to get better at this. Okay, how many... Um, 
Oh, we need a second. Thank you very much. Okay, how many uh, would like to adjourn? Do I have a second? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so we have a second and a third. And opposed? Of abstentions? Okay, so the meeting is adjourned as of at the end of worship tomorrow.